Hi there folks, if you're struggling to send emails with multiple attachments in Power Automate, getting things like, you can't open this file, something went wrong, or maybe blank files that appear to open okay with no error messages, well, this video is for you. Today, I'm going to show you how to overcome this and not only forward attachments, you'll learn how to filter efficiently those attachments and also save those attachments to SharePoint. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer the question from Mohammed, which is, can I record a video to capture email attachments when a new email arrives and then use those attachments in a follow up, send an email action. Now, I thought that this was going to be relatively straightforward and I'll tell you that it is not. So if I jump across onto my Outlook, the scenario is that I have an email, albeit I'm sending this to myself, but we can imagine that this is an incoming email from another user. I have several attachments. As you can see, I have two PDFs. I have a text file, which I don't want. I have a Word document, which I don't want. And I also have an image, which is part of the body of the email. And again, I don't want to include this when I forward on the attachment. So we're going to filter those files out in the most efficient way possible. And then in terms of what my flow looks like, I've already built it, but I'll talk you through it once we've run the process. It's based on when an email arrives. It's going to filter out those files. We're going to get all those attachments, create an attachment object, and then we're going to send that follow up email with just those two PDF files. So with the flow now in test, if I jump across onto Outlook and send that email, we can see that the sample email has arrived. And if I jump across onto Power Automate, the flow is triggered. It filters through those files and we can see there's one of two loops because, of course, we only had two PDFs attached to that incoming email. Now, if I jump back across onto my Outlook and open up my email, we can see I have two files there, the two PDFs. And when I click on those, they open as expected. And I'm able to view all the pages within those two PDF documents. Now, when Mohammed asked me the question, I thought it was going to be straightforward, but I can tell you that I've had corrupt files, I've had blank files, and it was only when I jumped across onto the documentation and had a look at the general known issues and limitations for the Office 365 Outlook connector I could see that in some cases, when using send an email action to send multiple attachments, the resulting files may be invalid. And then we're given a workaround or, or at least a method for attaching multiple attachments. Now, if we look back at my original video that I did three years ago, you'll see I have an object structure which has the name and the content bytes. And that's exactly what I was doing in today's demonstration. But unfortunately, that resulted in a blank file. When I read this documentation, and we scroll further down, we can ignore the fact that we're using variables in this example. The structure we're looking to create is the name followed by the content bytes, which is actually a separate object, which includes the content or the dollar content and then the dollar content type. And it was when I used this structure that I was able to attach attachments from an incoming email, ensuring that those files were attached correctly and I was able to read them. So if we jump across back onto Power Automate, we can have a look at how the flow runs. It's based on a trigger when a new email arrives. We're filtering out that data. And if we have a look at the raw inputs, we can see that there are actually five objects which relate to the five files. I'll call out a couple of things here. You can see inline equals true and then inline equals false. This refers to the image, the .png, that I've attached to the footer of my email. I don't want to include that, so we can filter out where the inline is not equal to true, or the inline is equal to false, whichever way you want to build out your condition. But equally, we'll see that we have name as well, and it's here that I'm going to use a filter to filter based on the end of the file name, being a .pdf in this case. So with the initial inputs being five files, if I look at the raw output, we can now see that we just have those two PDF files. And I'll go in to edit this flow in a second and show you how it's built too. The for each is obviously built on the output of the filter array. The get attachment, of course, is getting each of those attachments based on the ID. And then the compose attachment object is just a compose with that structure. And that structure, of course, is based on the name, the content bytes with the dollar content and the dollar content type, exactly like we see in the official documentation. The final action, of course, is just to send the email. And that uses the output of the compose to send all of the attachments that we've created. Now, if I go in to edit the flow and start with the trigger, you'll see that I've got include attachment set to no. You can set this to yes. Your attachments will be included as part of the trigger 
But again, within the documentation, it's a known limitation that if you have multiple emails and large attachments, it's possible that these files will become corrupt. So my recommendation is for you to leave that set at no and then use the separate get attachments action. You'll also see that I have only with attachments set to yes, so that this flow will only trigger if an incoming email has an attachment. I've also included a subject filter where the title must have sample files in it. And that just ensures that I don't end up in some crazy loop. Now, if we start by looking at the filter array, you can see that the input is based on the attachments. And with that, I have in advance mode an expression in the filter query. Now, if I click on that expression, it's based on two requirements. First of all, we're checking to see if the is in line property is equal to false. And you'll note that false is not in quotes because it's the Boolean, true or false. And that ensures that we don't get any of our inline images. I then have a second expression, which is ends with, again, checking the name ends with .pdf, this time in single quotes. Now, both of these expressions are separated by a comma and they're wrapped in the expression and. So both of these have to be equal to true in order for the attachments to appear in the output of our filter array. Now, depending on your requirements, you might not want to use the advanced scenario. You can put this back into basic mode. You can choose the dynamic value, for instance, the attachment name, and we could say that it ends with and put dot PDF. Something to bear in mind is that these string comparisons are case sensitive. So if for whatever reason someone is including .pdf in capital letters, you might want to wrap this expression into lower. And by that, I mean, if we close this, go into our FX, you can type in to lower with the open and close brackets into dynamic content. And when we search for attachment name, we'll include that in the middle of the brackets for to lower and hit add. And that will ensure that that file name is in complete lowercase. Now the for each is based on the body of our filter array. And we can see when I hover my mouse over, we have the expression there. This is instead of using the attachments array. And of course that means I've gone from five files down to two files by using the body of the filter. They get attachment is based on the message ID, which comes from our trigger, and then the attachment ID, which is based on item, open close brackets, and in the square brackets, ID. The compose attachment object is just a compose that I've called attachment object. It includes that structure from the documentation, the name, the content bytes, and then we have that dollar $content, which is the content bytes dynamic value from the get attachment, and then the content type, which is also a dynamic value from the get attachments action. Finally, in the send an email action, I have a fixed email address. Of course, you can make that dynamic. I have a subject, I have a body, but in the outputs, I have an expression, outputs compose attachment object, which is the name of our compose action in the apply to each. And this is a technique for creating an array based on content within an apply to each. This is instead of using variables and it allows you to run your apply to each concurrently, something that can cause you issues if you're using variables. Now there's two other things I'd like to demonstrate to you. One is how I built the for each loop, because whilst it looks pretty straightforward with only two actions, there's actually a wee trick to building this out. The other thing I'd like to show you is how you can save your attachments to SharePoint. So first up, on a parallel branch, I'm going to build out the for each loop and I'm going to add in the get attachment control. When I insert the get attachment control, I'm going to select the message ID, which I can search for here and find the message ID. And then I'll get the attachment ID. And it's at this point we'll see a change occur. So I'll choose the attachment ID and automatically this is put into an apply to each. When it does this, you'll note that within the for each, it's inserted the attachments from the trigger body as the input, but expressions are all the same. So all we need to do is hit the cross on this, select the lightning bolt and change the input to the attachments from the filter array. The compose object, if we insert a compose action like so, is based on a structure. And if I right click on that compose that I've already built and pin it, we can see it side by side. So I need an opening squiggly bracket 
I need a closing squiggly bracket, and then I need to have name in quotes, followed by a colon, and then in quotes, I need the name of the file, like so. Make sure I put in a comma. After that, in quotes, I want to insert content bytes, like so, and then an opening squiggly bracket. Then we have dollar content with a colon, followed by the dynamic value for the content bytes. Then we have a comma, followed by dollar content type. And then we select content type and put in our closing bracket. And with that, we've created our structure for our attachment object. We can give this a name like object. So it's called compose object. And then outside of this apply to each loop, if we're using the send an email action, we could use an expression, but I'm going to use a compose here just to demonstrate how it creates an array. It's based on the expression outputs with the open and close brackets, and then the name of the compose within the apply to each. In this case, compose object, and we can hit add. And this is our attachment array. And you'll note this expression outputs of compose object is exactly the same expression that I've used within our send an email action for the attachments. If I go and remove the expression and switch to the details view, this is the default view that you'll see. Make sure that you switch to text mode before inserting that expression. If I switch back to array mode and add an item, which is often a very good way to see the structure that you need to create. If I was to create a file name, so file name one and some content, this is my content. You can use this T to toggle back and forth to see the structure that's needed to be created. In this case, it demonstrates the name and the content bytes, which is exactly the same as I had in my original video. But if we pin this compose object, you'll see that the documentation, whilst it said we need to have name, content bytes is actually defined as an object with a dollar content and the dollar content type. So make sure that if you are using attachments or having attachment problems, that you attempt this structure within your flow. And I'd love to know in the comments if that's been successful in solving your problems when saving attachments from emails. So I'll scrap the sample data here. I'll go and return the original expression, which is outputs, open close brackets, and then compose attachment object. We'll add that in. And then I mentioned that we were going to save each of those attachments into our SharePoint document library. So within the apply to each loop, I'm going to add in an action to create a file. And that create file is on SharePoint. I'll choose a site address. I'll choose a path for our library, which is my shared documents. The file name can be dynamic. And I can use the name of the attachment. And the file content is simply the content bytes. And I can save that flow. So I'll jump back across onto Outlook. I'll send exactly the same email as before. We can see that the flow has now completed. The extra addition this time is that we have the create file, which will have created each of those two PDF files on our SharePoint site. Over on the right hand side, that newly created equivalent for each has the compose attach array. And if we have a look at the raw output, we can see that it's created an array of those two PDFs with the content bytes, which includes the dollar content, which is a base64 file encoding, and then the content type, which is the file type. If I jump across onto SharePoint, we can see that each of those two files have been created. And if I load them up, we can see that they open successfully. And then as before, over on Outlook, we have that incoming email with both of those PDF files. So really the main thing to highlight is make sure that you've got your attachments in the right format. Make sure you've created this object structure if you're having problems with your file content when attaching them to emails. And also make sure that your dollar content is in base64. And to the human eye, it just looks like lots of letters and numbers. If it's looking like anything different, go back into your flow, check your expressions, and then run your flow again. That's it for the demonstration. I hope you've learned how to attach files to your emails and in particular deal with any problems you've had in the past 
I'd love to hear in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.